The J-36 is a fascinating aircraft that captures the imagination of aviation enthusiasts and military historians alike. Originally developed by Saab, the Swedish aerospace and defense company, the J-36 was part of Sweden's ambitious efforts during the Cold War to maintain a strong, independent air defense capability. While it never entered full-scale production or active service, the J-36 remains an important chapter in the story of Swedish aviation innovation. This note explores the background, design philosophy, technical specifications, features and legacy of the J-36, offering a comprehensive overview for those interested in military aircraft and aviation history. Sweden has long pursued a policy of neutrality, which during the tense decades of the Cold War meant developing a robust domestic defense industry. Saab, already known for successful aircraft like the J-29 Tunnen and the J-35 Draken, sought to push the boundaries of jet fighter design with new concepts that could outperform contemporary threats. The J-36 emerged from this environment as a proposed supersonic interceptor intended to defend Swedish airspace against high-speed, high-altitude bombers. It was designed during the late 1950s, a period marked by rapid technological advancement and growing concerns over nuclear deterrence. One of the most striking aspects of the J-36 was its unconventional design. Unlike the sleek delta wing of the J-35 Draken, the J-36 featured a canard configuration with a main wing positioned further back on the fuselage and small foreplanes near the nose. This layout was chosen to enhance maneuverability and reduce landing speeds, both critical for operating from Sweden's short, dispersed road runways, a key element of the nation's Bat-60 airbase system. The canard design also contributed to improved lift at high angles of attack giving the aircraft superior agility in dogfights. Propulsion for the J-36 was planned around a single powerful turbojet engine, likely derived from the Rolls-Royce Avon, or a licensed Swedish version produced by Volvo Flygmotor. This engine would have enabled the aircraft to reach speeds exceeding Mach 2, placing it among the fastest interceptors of its era. The airframe was constructed primarily from aluminum alloys, with some use of titanium in high heat areas near the engine exhaust. Aerodynamic efficiency was a top priority, and wind tunnel testing played a significant role in refining the shape of the fuselage and control surfaces. In terms of avionics, the J-36 was envisioned to carry a state-of-the-art fire control system for its time, integrating radar, navigation and weapons guidance into a single cockpit interface. The onboard radar would have been capable of detecting and tracking enemy aircraft at long ranges, allowing the J-36 to engage targets before they could penetrate Swedish airspace. Weaponry would likely have included a combination of air-to-air -air missiles and internal cannons, consistent with Swedish doctrine that emphasized both beyond visual range and close-in combat capabilities. Despite its promising design, the J-36 never progressed beyond the mock-up and planning stages. Several factors contributed to its cancellation. First, the rapid evolution of missile technology during the 1960s began to shift military thinking away from manned interceptors towards surface-to-air missile systems, which were seen as more cost-effective for national air defense. Second, budget constraints within the Swedish military forced tough choices about which projects to fund and resources were ultimately directed towards the continued development and production of the J-35 Draken and, later, the J-37 Vigan. Finally, geopolitical changes and reassessments of the Soviet threat led to a re-evaluation of Sweden's defence priorities. Although the J-36 never flew, its influence can be seen in later Saab designs. 
The canard configuration, for example, became a hallmark of the JAS-39 Gripen, Sweden's modern multi-role fighter introduced in the 1990s. The lessons learned from conceptualizing the J-36, particularly regarding short takeoff and landing performance, high-speed interception, and integration of advanced avionics, helped shape Saab's engineering philosophy for decades to come. In this sense, the J-36 was not a failure, but rather a stepping stone in Sweden's journey toward aerospace self-reliance. From a historical perspective, the J-36 reflects the unique challenges faced by neutral countries during the Cold War. Sweden could not rely on NATO or Warsaw Pact support, so it had to develop its own solutions to complex defence problems. The J-36 was born out of that necessity, a symbol of ingenuity, independence and strategic foresight. Today, it serves as a reminder that not all great aircraft need to enter service to leave a lasting impact on aviation. For aviation enthusiasts and model builders, the J-36 offers a compelling what-if scenario. What if it had been built? How would it have performed against contemporary aircraft like the MiG-21 or the F-104 Starfighter? While these questions remain speculative, they fuel ongoing interest in the project. Online communities, aviation forums and YouTube channels dedicated to military history often feature discussions. Digital renderings and scale models of the J-36, keeping its memory alive for new generations. In terms of specifications, though exact numbers vary depending on the source, the J-36 was expected to have a length of approximately 16 metres, a wingspan of around 8.5 metres, and a maximum takeoff weight in the range of 10 to 12 metric tonnes. Its service ceiling would likely have exceeded 18,000 metres, allowing it to intercept high-flying reconnaissance aircraft and bombers. Range would have been modest, as was typical for interceptors of the era, but sufficient for Sweden's defensive needs given the country's relatively compact geography. The cockpit design emphasised pilot visibility and ease of operation under high-G manoeuvres. Ejection seats would have been fitted with zero-zero capability, ensuring pilot safety even at low altitude and speed a crucial feature for operations from improvised runways. Fuel capacity was optimized for rapid response rather than endurance, consistent with the interceptor role. While the J-36 may not be as well known as other Cold War jets, its story is a testament to the creativity and resilience of a small nation determined to protect its sovereignty. It represents a moment in time when jet technology was advancing at breakneck speed and every new design pushed the limits of what was thought possible.